Well, hello everybody. This is Tyler Yell. I'm a currency analyst and trading instructor with Daily FX, uh, a division of IG UK, uh, and it's a pleasure to take some time and walk you through my technical dashboard. Now, this is something that uh, I've been sharing on my Closing Bell webinar, uh, and I've had a few questions. Some people really like it. Other people want to like it, um, <laughs> but uh, don't really know how to use it. Uh, and, and I guess those that don't like it just don't want to ask me or talk to me about it, so I, I don't know. <laughs> but the, the reception has been positive, um, and, and some have asked for a further explanation of it, so that's exactly the purpose of this video. Um, Rest assured, it shouldn't be too long of a video, hopefully about five minutes, but um, I want to make sure that not only are you, are you comfortable with what is presented on it, what the different columns mean, so how to interpret the numbers that you see on there, uh, but also that you're comfortable reaching out to me with any follow-up questions this might bring. Uh, as you can imagine, I do need to take care of some housekeeping up front, just, just again informing you of some of the risks if this is your first introduction to markets uh, and, and specifically to leveraged markets like FX, understanding some of the risks that are uh, that, that can be involved uh, when, when utilizing leverage in your trading uh, and the next is that uh, you know as I'm explaining this tool to you please do not interpret this as a explicit uh, trade advice or explicit invitation for you to open up a certain trade this is informative in nature I'm sharing with you a tool that I utilize that helps me understand what's happening in the markets and, and where the opportunities are on a day-to-day -day basis uh, and again this is my contact information you're absolutely welcome to use it, um, it you likely have uh, either come to me because you have uh, been on the daily FX website or you're an IG client um, and, and utilizing some of the resources available to you as an IG client from daily FX however you've come to me feel free to reach out to me TL at daily FX is my email address or a short uh, perceived short answers <laughs> uh, can be accessed through Twitter all right, so uh, with that, I'm actually going to go to excuse me, uh, and go to the dashboard, and and uh, this might seem intimidating at first, and so that's exactly why we're doing this video. I'm going to go through on a column by column basis and explain what's going on. Uh, as you can imagine, there are some columns that are more important than others. Um, let me take care of this guy, get rid of that, um, and, and we're just going to make sure that you're, again, comfortable with this so that if, if you do decide to join me, and I hope you do, um, on a closing bell webinar, when I come to this slide, you know exactly what we're talking about and, and what's going on. So uh, I'll also be flipping back and forth between this and a live chart, um, but again, it's just it's designed to help you understand better what's on here. So we're going to be utilizing EURUSD. I'll, I'll, I'll point to some other currencies. As you can see, there's some values that are a bit more extreme, and so I think that the information is better explained with those extreme measures. So with that being said, let's go column to column. As you can see, column A, or the first column that you'll see, uh, is going to be the currency pair. So, so naturally, it's very self-explanatory. Um, these are fluid meaning that I can adjust these um, as you can imagine um, given that I basically control the control the inputs um, so I've had some requests to take out some of the Nakis uh, Norwegian Krones no, no, no disrespect Norway um, but to replace that with uh, you know maybe Euro Kiwi Euro Aussie things of that nature um, and, and so you might see these change but that's what that first column is uh, I, I stream this or I plug this in. This is from a, a Bloomberg API. Um, so I, I say that to say um, that bid ask price, that, that's, that, that is just showing you the rate when it was pulled. Um, the, the first one that I think needs explanation is the percentage today. Uh, and, and what that's basically saying is what that spot price is relative to the day's range. So as you can imagine, if we're trading at the quote unquote highs of the day, then quite simply you're going to see 100%. If we're trading at the quote unquote lows of the day, then you're going to be trading as close to 0% as possible. Um, and then what, what that's showing, the difference in the day's range can be found here, right? The, the, the column D and column E, the high of the day and the low of the day. Uh, and that can be helpful because, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're a day trader and, and you're, you're buying uh, or you're going long a currency like EURUSD, you definitely would not want to be holding a trade if you broke the lows of the day. So you can see here the day's range, which it's a pretty healthy range and you can see that um, we are we are uh, on, on the on the 
bearish side, if you will, on the lows of the day, indicating some dollar strength. Now, the day that I'm presenting this, December 8th, uh, which is a Friday, also NFP day, um, there's some volatility there, so, so a decent bit of volatility. But again, what that high and low is showing you is, is the day's trading range. Um, and so naturally, if you, sub if you subtract the low from the high, that would give you the day's trading range. So on today's date, Again, December 8th, the high of the day as the time of this reading uh, was uh, 118.15, uh, and the low of the day uh, is, is 17.30. The RSI 3, that's also something that gets a lot of questions, and I'm glad it does. Again, I, I, I think questions are the reason why I do this, is so we can have a conversation about what can be valuable to your trading. Um, so RSI 3, right, that's going to be relative strength index looking over a three-day period. Now, most people use the default, which is 14, and there's nothing wrong with that, but what I'm looking at, and the reason why I come to this uh, is, is because I do want to see a very short period momentum reading. So when you look at this, and, and I have these data bars, which are it's just an Excel input, and it's basically showing how extreme the reading is, right? So, so the lower that blue bar is, the more bearish the momentum is on a short-term basis. Uh, so you can see we're at go back here, uh, we're at uh, basically 16 on, on a three-day RSI. And, and this is somewhat volatile, but again, this is, this is showing there is short-term bearish momentum. If, if you look at uh, from an RSI perspective, and I'm not going to go into the, the calculation for that, there's a lot of great articles on daily FX that, that walk through the calculation of RSI, uh, but it's a momentum metric, right? And, and you look over X periods. So a three-period RSI is saying, what, what is that short-term momentum that we're looking at? Is it very bullish, meaning that it's, you know, it's going to be in that 80 to 100 range, or is it rather bearish, meaning we're believe we're in that 20 to that zero to 20 range. So I'll tell you the way I use this um, is, is is one of two ways, right? If if I have a bias, which right now early December my bias is looking for pockets of dollar strength. Where is that coming through? Um, and 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 you can see that from RSI as you get comfortable reading this, you can start to see. Okay, uh, I'm looking across the board and I'm seeing uh, very low RSI three on Aussie dollar. That indicates dollar strength. Uh, low low RSI three on Euro USD also indicating dollar strength. Dollar Yen above 80, so that's also indicating dollar strength. So you're seeing multiple variances of, or multiple views, if you will, of dollar strength. So the two ways that I use this is, is one, uh, validating a trend. Now I am first and foremost a, a momentum-based trend follower, right? So I look for momentum to extend itself. Um, in, in the sense of we just we do not know how aggressive the inertia uh, or, or the momentum forces of markets are, and so to me, the, the great unknown of any market is is, is pin, pinpointing a reversal. Uh, so I, I say that to say this: I am looking for opportunities to either ride momentum or or, or, or anticipate a resumption of a momentum a momentous move, a trend, uh, and look for higher probability areas to join that. So again, looking at this RSI 3, basically what you're doing is you're coming in and you're saying um, in a downtrend, uh, I, I want to look for places to rejoin that. And again, a downtrend from RSI perspective is going to be, you know, 20 to 0 to 20. The, 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 th the times when a downtrend can be interesting to me, um, but you have a high RSI reading, is when you have like a month over month or a year over year downtrend. Uh, a very, very clear trend. So uh, let me see if I can find an example on the chart. Um, I'm going to do, let's see if we can do Kiwi dollar. Sorry, I didn't want to, wanted to have as clean of charts as possible. All right, but you can see here, since August, we've been moving pretty cleanly lower. Um, and, and so the reason why that's of interest to me uh, is because if we do start to see a very short-term bullish RSI reading, right, that, 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 then I'm going to have that on my, you know, basically my short list of when can I anticipate a, a breakdown. Uh, Aussie dollar, I think, is a good example as well. Um, so this was a recent analyst pick I had to, to look for a bearish trade. Uh, basically, uh, there was some strength here that we were seeing. Uh, and I was saying, okay, if we, if we see a breakdown basically below 75.50, that could be an indication that this very long-term downtrend, or this long, this, this I, mean, I shouldn't say very long-term downtrend. If you're, if you're a day trader, then it would be a very long-term. But from a swing trader, this, this clean downtrend uh, is, is looking to continue. So it's not the case here, uh, but you, you can see Aussie dollar, it, it's a bearish RSI, but a few days back, we were looking at 60, 70, 80 RSI, three on Aussie dollar. But I knew the broader downtrend was, was a force that uh, would likely overcome uh, those, those shorter term, those shorter term aspects. Um, and, and, and so I'd look for that longer term forces to 
basically retake over what you see on the chart and, and, and so forecasting lower prices and, and, and thereby of course looking for a, for a bearish trade. And dollar CAD is another one. Let's go to Dollar CAD real quick. Sorry, messy chart. Let me see the quickest way to get rid of everything on here. Ah. Very nice. Okay, so uh, since early September, you've seen this this nice move higher. So similarly, um, looking at this and seeing some of the influencing factors of this moving higher, which is something that I've I've shared uh, a lot on uh, on closing bell webinars. Um, which if you haven't if you haven't been to a closing bell webinar, of course I invite you to to, to join us on them. Uh, but uh, all that being said, uh, said looking for some of these um, opportunities where the influencing factors continue to favor dollar yen rising, but you see a very bearish RSI three on dollar CAD. Uh, so again, that's not the case because you can see we're having pockets of strength right now. Again, you could see when I took this reading, we're at basically the high of the days. Um, and so all, all that being said, if I have a bearish reading, but I have an overall and bearish reading on RSI three, so short term momentum. Um, that, that I'm going to be looking for a longer term uh, opportunity to buy. Uh, it, it's sorry, it's funny. I just thought about the fact that I said at the beginning this might be a five minute video. There's there's no way this will be <laughs> this will be closer to thirty minutes. All right, so um, so uh, let's go to the next column. The next column is one month risk reversal. Now, if if you're somewhat newer to the market and this just you know it just sounds like I spoke another language. Fear not, <laughs> fear not, dear trader. Uh, this is this is the one month twenty five delta risk reversal. If it again sounds like I'm speaking another language, I I, I kind of am. It's options market terminology, and, and what a risk reversal is looking at is the ratio of out of the money calls, the premium, excuse me, the ratio of the premium of out of the money calls to out of the money puts over a certain tenor. So you can see I have two tenors here. Tenor is a fancy way of saying time, uh, one month and one week. And, and so basically, if you're looking at the premium that an out of the money call is getting relative to an out of the money put, then it's going to have a positive risk reversal. If there's a premium for the put, which is a downside option bet, it, there's going to be a negative risk reversal reading over that tenor. So that's how I read this. And, and you can see here. So uh, these other metrics are not going to be negative, right? But this is where you can start to see some negative readings. So, and uh, in fact, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this from Excel is, is because I could come in and I could say, okay, let's look at it from a descending aspect. Basically, when you do this, this is making the argument of over the next month, where are option traders the most bullish, right? Or put it put another way, what are they willing to pay the most to protect the upside on? And it's fascinating because you can see from here, it's Euro strength. And they are willing to pay the most over the next month to protect surprise Euro strength. Let's flip it to the other side. What are they willing to pay the most for to protect on downside? Well, it, it's worth noting that there, there's kind of this perma bias, if you will, on protecting against yen strength, which if you're looking from a trading perspective, it, it's going to be uh, lower yen crosses, right? So dollar yen lower, pound yen lower, Aussie yen lower, CAD yen lower, Kiwi yen lower. So that's well and good, but the, the way I think you use that from, a, again, a, a, a sentiment perspective or trading insight, is you can see of these yen crosses, they're basically playing, paying the least to protect against dollar yen downside, or euro yen downside, excuse me. Um, and, and you can see that makes sense because of this broad euro bullish bias from this option perspective over the coming month. So, so even when there's a clump of pairs together, like yen pairs together, you could still see here, you can say, okay, well, overall, this is helping me to see at least in early, uh, in early December 2017 that there's this bias to protect against yen strength, especially against commodity currencies like Aussie yen, CAD yen, Kiwi yen weakness. So, so that, that also shows that, okay, maybe I don't want to trade yen crosses, but, but nonetheless, this is showing me that there is uh, some concerns that should the yen strengthen, it would strengthen the most against Aussie, Kiwi, uh, and CAD yen. So hopefully that makes sense. That's what the one month risk reversal is looking at. What this is showing, um, and, and I, I wanted it to be helpful, not confusing, but I don't know if it was. This is the change of the one month 25 delta risk reversal on the day, right? So so basically, again, I'm gonna I'm gonna use this uh, this sort function here. What's changed the most? Uh, and, and it's and it's pound dollar. And, and and so what cable or pound dollar or pound British pound sterling against USD, whatever you want to call it, uh, what this is basically showing us um, is that from a risk reversal perspective, from a risk reversal perspective, um, that again there's no longer a premium being paid to protect against the downside day over day. Now 
it's worth noting there was a development with the with the Brexit negotiations about the Irish border overnight and, and so again it's that worst case scenario is 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 less and less and less likely and so people are saying okay I'm not going to pay as much for that downside protection on sterling and, and so that's why you see this positive change in that one month risk reversal uh, and, and similarly similarly uh, for what it's worth you can see there, there's also not as much of a uh, a view to protect against downside on euro sterling so that's kind of two different views um, uh, not as much downside protection on cable but it's at the same time, not as much downside protection on euro pound. Um, but but that's how that's how you play that. Um, so that's the change in the one day or the the one month risk reversal. The next one is the one week risk reversal. So the logic that I mentioned here for the one month is the exact same as the one week. It's basically just shorter term. So. You have a central bank meeting, which we have, uh, you know, the Federal Reserve on December 13th. You have a central bank meeting. You'll often see these a bit more volatile when this one week tenor includes such an important news in it announcement like the Federal Reserve um, but all that being said this to me is also very very helpful because it basically says okay right now if you look at option traders paying premiums um, so right this isn't analyst picks or you know people you know doing a poll or anything of that nature these are these are option traders paying premiums to protect against upside or downside and looking at what's the ratio of those you could see right now traders in aggregate are saying I want to protect against EuroCAD upside the most when you look at, at these I think it's uh, what was that 25 currency pairs 24 currency pairs when I look at these 24 currency pairs over the next week I want to protect against EuroCAD upside the most right or CAD weakness is another way to put it and, and, and look to the very bottom of this chart what, what is the thing that they're paying the most to protect against the downside CAD yen right so that's showing you that right now CAD yen is one of the weaker currencies out there and, and I should have done this earlier but um, you can see here let's go to let's go to euro CAD right so so right now they're basically saying over the next week I want to protect against some of that further weakening of the Canadian dollar or euro CAD moving higher CAD yen now it's it's a bit higher in the day because we've had some CAD weakness but they're basically saying if, if things go wrong CAD yen is is the one that could likely fall the, the most and so I want to protect against that downside so again risk reversal looking at options that's that's definitely you have speculators in the options market but you also have treasury desks of, of, of international corporations right that are just saying given the exposure we have we need to protect against this and so the one month and the one week are, are different ways of, of taking a look at that and saying okay how how protected do I want to be all right so to the next columns you, you can see here and I'm not going to filter these because what, what's more important here uh, are the currency pairs um, let me do this let me do the the momentum all right. So what this is are really these four columns are targets. You've got two bearish targets and two bullish targets. And and, and what these do is they actually take the forward rate uh, and and they they say okay if you look at the one standard deviation using the one week implied forward rate, which it's not worth going into too much detail about the one month the one week implied. Uh, forward uh, but but basically you're looking at uh, interest rate parity and, and things of that nature but basically what it's saying is if you look at the one week forward and then you 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 do a one uh, standard deviation with again basically some implied volatility and things of that nature what should we be looking at what's an appropriate so like what's a mathematical target for the downside but the one standard deviation right which you know my, my statistics professor would kick me in the shin for not knowing this, but you know, I think it's like 65% of the time it'll it'll stick within uh, that one standard deviation, uh, and then 95% of the time it'll stand within the two standard deviation. So by by all stretches of the imagination, a two standard deviation target based on again based on the one week uh, the um, uh, the one week forward outright using implied volatility over one week that one that two standard deviation bearish and bullish target that's going to be aggressive so typically that's going to be holding a trade that you have a high conviction on for multiple weeks at a time right thinking that we'll continue to move there or thinking that the forward rate is going to continue to move there or the spot will continue to to, to get closer to that from, from a from a typical swing trader somebody that's looking to hold for a couple of days right that one week one standard deviation bearish and one week one standard deviation bullish target is really going to be what's in your wheelhouse so let's take a look here let's go to dollar Dollar Swiss. Um, so dollar Swiss, as you can imagine, this is showing um, not a not a very wide disparity, but basically um, 
one spot. Well, let's let's go to the chart. Let's look at dollar Swiss. Let's clear it off. All right, so I'm going to see if I can just mark this horizontal line. So I think we had one spot 30. Good enough. And then was it 101.30? So we'll, we'll go back and take a look in just a second. Yeah, so one spot 30 pips and then uh, basically 130 pips or, or basically 100 pips higher than that. So those would be the bullish targets that you take a look at. So if you had a bullish bias, you'd be saying, okay, I'm, I'm looking for opportunities to buy. And, and again, this is going to be the most probable target ba based on what this is showing you. One spot zero zero three right and the more extreme target which again you're, you're probably going to hold for a week and some change would be uh, would be at the uh, one spot zero one three zero uh, let's, let's look at another one let's look at dollar yen right so I have, I have, a, I have a bullish bias on dollar yen let's take a look at that dollar yen all right, so you have 114.95 and 116.41. Again, 116.41 is going to be a very aggressive target. Uh, so that's something that that really you wouldn't anticipate getting hit, um, uh, unless unless we had a you know unless you're holding for multiple weeks or, or you had a very aggressive move that's just not priced in right now. But looking at those bullish targets on dollar yen, 114.88, I think it was 116.32. Let's do that same thing. 114.88. Good enough. One sixteen thirty-two was it? And that'll work for us as well. So you can see here that this one fourteen eighty-eight basically comes at the top of this very very broad range. I was looking at this a little bit earlier today, and it looks like that will also align with some of these Fibonacci levels. Not exactly, but 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 pretty close. But you can see here, th there is definitely a range of resistance there, and then that's fascinating. The seven eight six aligns almost perfectly with that two standard deviation target, which to me just just means that that's a there's confluence there. There's multiple technical signs. This is yes, this could be a key point where price either has a sticking point, or there could be a, a bit of a battle, if you will, between sellers and buyers. But if it breaks through, then you'd start to look at okay, we we might be moving towards one eighteen sixty six, the twenty sixteen high, if if not even beyond if not even beyond that. So that's how you use those one week, one standard deviation uh, or one week, two standard deviation bearish and bullish targets. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna use a bearish target now or a bearish example just to uh, show both of those. So uh, let's look, let's use Aussie dollars. So I had an analyst pick on Aussie USD. All right, uh, so going back to that, uh, the, those targets, we were looking at, I think the one week, one standard deviation bearish target was 74.14. The one week, two, uh, two standard deviation bearish target was, let's see if I can find it, 73.23. Okay. So just to, again, help you locate this and get comfortable with it. 74.16, excuse me, 73.26. All right. With that, same thing, same song, second verse. Seventy-four sixteen, and then what's it? Seventy-three twenty-three. All right, so those would be, again, just mathematically derived bearish targets for you. And, and again, these are going to be swing targets. These are holding over for multiple trading sessions, probably multiple weeks. But when you look at some of those factors that say, okay, you know, whether it's um, uh, sentiment from IG clients, so IG UK's client sentiment data, it's giving you a, a you know, a multi-week or you know, multi-session target, or there's technical factors, um, you know, trading under a, a downtrend line, something of that nature, or something I share with you in Closing Bell, all of those can be things that you can utilize to say, okay, I have a bias, bullish or bearish, now what are targets that I'm looking at? Well, again, 
these 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 are mathematically derived from the forward rate, from implied volatility, right, and then from just the math of, of one and two standard deviations around that forward rate with implied volatility baked in. So, in, in my in my opinion, it's a, it's a rather sophisticated target, uh, and and something that it's it's important to me to use dynamic targets that use like implied volatility because you're basically using the wisdom of the crowd, if you will, and, and their anticipation of, of of how rates will change uh, in order to give you a in order to give you a view. And, and of course, as you can imagine, let's say you have this this broader bearish outlook on Aussie USD. So you're looking at 7323, right? Well, you could also use this to say Okay, okay, I'm going to go for the more aggressive target, the 73 or 26 zone, excuse me. Uh, but my 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 stop point, if you will, is going to be 75.98, right? And so you could have a target that's aggressive down here, and then a uh, invalidation point, if you will, that's one standard deviation away from that 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 forward rate, uh, and that can be an that can be, in my opinion, a very intelligent way to have a trailing stop. Uh, and, and so again, these are just different ways that you can apply uh, some of the things that I share on this dashboard. All right, the uh, the next column. Hopefully that makes sense. And again, you guys have my contact information. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, uh, always available to IG clients. Um, so feel free to reach out to me if you want some more information on this. Um, all right, we're on the downhill. You guys are doing great. All right, so overnight implied volatility. Uh, this is a, this is basically you know be, more useful if you will for shorter term traders, uh, but it's just it's the overnight implied volatility is is helping you see what's anticipated on a relative basis, um, and, and so as you can imagine, let's do descending right. So you're looking over the next 24 hours, which it's Friday afternoon, so you're you're, you're calculating the close of U, of New York trading, the open of of uh, Asia trading on Sunday. So not not a lot's going on here. Uh, this can really start to sp to spike, if you will, when you have a central bank event or a key news event. Uh, but all, all that being said, you can see here, so all things being equal, anticipating the most volatility here, right, in these in these markets, all things being equal over the next 24 hours, expecting the, less volat the least volatility here. So, th so that's really how you use that. Uh, this is just giving you the, the range, the 30-day range. Um, naturally, this is you know, this is basically looking at a 30 day high minus 30 day low. Um, and, and so that, that also, that also will vary, but it's, it's helpful. I mean, this, this shows you over 30 days, look, we have seen significant yen weakness. Um, and now these are, again, it, it, it's, it's important. It's important to know. It's important to know, um, right. That when you look at yen pricing, it's going to be different. So th that's not saying that, Swiss is very strong. Uh, it's just different ways in, in which the the ranges happen. So this could really be the equivalent here. What I mean, 640 pips is, is a giant move. In fact, let's let's pull up the pound yen chart. Right, it's it's been a it's been a pretty nice move over the last 30 days. But the, I I say that to say this yen yen it's it's you need to understand kind of how the different pips. Yen versus other currencies, uh, and that can affect it as well. All right, and then this column. This this to me is fascinating, but also, of course, like everything else, uh, ne needs to be needs to be well explained. Uh, so again, I'm going to do the descending order. All right. Make sure it was clean. Okay, so what is this saying? What this is saying is that if you look at if you look at the one month implied volatility, so one month implied volatility, which again is basically a, a way of which option pricing models are saying this is the pri this is the volatility that's priced into the market. You don't have to know a ton about options and pricing models of options like Black Shoals and things of that nature to know that the value of options increase when volatility is higher. Both call and put value increases when implied volatility is higher. So the price of options are going higher, the implied volatility, which is basically a plug, that's what the implied means, um, it's, it's, it's a way of saying the markets are pricing in more volatility over in this currency based on option pricing models. So that, that's the whole thing there. What this column over here represents, column Q, it's showing the percent position of current one month implied volatility over the last year. So that might sound confusing, but here's what that's saying. If you look at what's being priced into the options market over these different currency pairs in the next month, this is how it relates when you look back 
the, over the last year, all right? So so it's it's a pretty non-volatile time right now, um, all things considered. I mean, you can see here the one month implied volatility is pretty low in some of these yen crosses. Now, if you're a yen trader, you might appreciate that unless you're a day trader and you're trying to capture a lot of volatility. But what this is saying is that really there's there's not a lot of fear in these markets, at least over the next month. Where there is some fear, but still nothing, nothing's on the top half of, of the monthly, of the annual range, excuse me, um, where you are seeing fears like Euro Swiss, Pound Swiss, um, Dollar Sec, and even that, look, I mean, you're, you're, at, the, you're, at, the, you're at the lower quartile here, yeah, really all of these you can see are in the bottom quartile of the annual range. So looking over which, I mean, you think about what we have, all the holidays in December, beginning of the new year, you don't have a ton of volatility, at least nothing really expected. Uh, but that's what this is showing. So this is saying, okay, where am I anticipating volatility over the last week? So if you're one of those traders that says, okay, I like to catch volatility over a multi-week aspect, uh, I don't really care what I trade, or, and I'm, I'm really what I'm wanting to trade, the asset class I care most about is volatility, that, then you're gonna look to the top of this range. So some people might not care about this. I think it's important to know what volatility is being priced in from paying market participants. So again, not looking at polls, not looking at analyst picks, but what are paying market participants pricing in? And, and that's where that, uh, that one month implied volatility range, uh, you know, basically w where it sits on the annual range, that's why that's important to me because that, that says, okay, there, there's volatility getting priced in on Noxeki, which who, who trades that? Not a lot of people trade Noxeki for a sec, but it does show some volatility is getting priced in there. Uh, and then you can see here from, again, an implied volatility component, and, and a lot of this I think has to do with the Brexit negotiations, um, that on a relative basis, you are seeing more volatility priced in there. So, that's the walkthrough of my FX dashboard. Took about 30 minutes, so sorry. <laughs> but hopefully it allows you to use this on a day-by-day -day basis. I do closing bell webinars Monday through Thursday, at least as it currently stands, uh, and, I, and I update this and share this on the webinar. And again, a handful of people have loved it, a handful of people have said, I'd like to love it, but I really don't know how to use it, uh, and the people that at least don't love it haven't, haven't told me about it. So uh, one thing that will probably change naturally is uh, taking out or putting in some currency pairs based on requests. But outside of that, I hope this was a helpful video. Thank you for watching. And of course, feel free to, feel free to shoot me an email uh, if you have some questions. Thanks, guys. Bye.